All right, we are officially recording. Now, in the beginning of this, brother, what I was talking about is time-based trading and people were having a little bit um, of trouble trying to gauge, you know, reversal hour. And I was showing the two best examples I think I've seen in a long time, right? It's like on semi, you have one of two kind of, you know, objectives, right? Outer lines of a previous, previous resistance level that have already shown during reversal hour is key. And then dude, you got, where was it? It's, um, LEXS is finally something that's not at previous resistance points necessarily, but it's breaking under VWAP finally. And I was like, dude, what two better examples, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep. What are you trading, bro? I, I, I have a good feeling you have orders everywhere. <laughs> yep. <laughs> dude, this is cracked market, bro. This is literally squeeze crack fucking volatile market. Alex heard you, man. You better be careful. Yep. <laughs> what, are you, what are you in, bro? What are you focusing on? <laughs> just chilling, bro. What's up? <laughs> What's up, man? What do you want to talk about today, Bax? I'm just waiting for it. Um, um, for questions. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, are, guys, get your questions out so you can give Bao and I topics to talk about because, man, I'll tell you, we've done so many of these uh, over the years, dude. We're, like, always, like, looking for new topics to help you guys because, like, we, like, again, trading is so repetitive, right? Uh, let's see. Alex wants to talk about how the shorts dominated. Now the longs dominate the market cycle. So let me, let me kind of tear into this like I was earlier, and then maybe Bao can give his opinion. So, what we've realized in the past week, arguably week and a half to two weeks, especially in the last three days, is guys, shorts were getting bailed out. I mean, you could short almost anywhere. You know, longs were really having trouble. I know Harry Haas, Aloha Trader, who are our long mods, they were having trouble and they were just like, not having trouble, but they were getting a little impatient because they were like, dude, it's really not a good long market. So here's what happens in something like that. You know, the market comes in cycles, right? Cyclical. So what happens is, you know, most stocks in the day, you know, kind of like with this kind of price action, just kind of down, right? And all these shorts who just short kind of get bailed out. Nothing really breaks pre-market highs. But today, today was the reason why, it, it, unless you constantly adapt as a trader, unless you constantly show up and you have to stay up to speed, you're just not going to know what to do when a neuro comes along, when a freaking, um, when a semi comes along, dude, you think that you can just keep shorting and keep shorting because you've been bailed out for weeks. This is the shit that reminds you how dangerous trading can be when you're stubborn, when you revenge trade, when you don't have a max loss, when you just think that a market is only going to go a certain way for the tested time. I cannot tell you how many traders I have traded with over seven years that are not traders anymore. And they were wonderful back in the day. And you know what happened? They got so complacent with the fact that back in the day, there were less zombies and Hey, I could just throw a couple darts out and always win on trades. And now you put them in a market like this and do, they can't trade their way out of a paper bag. And it's not a slight against them. It's a slight towards their mind and their work ethic of, hey, I'm King Dick and I'll stay King Dick forever. It doesn't happen like that, right? Oh, what do we got? Oh, shit. I just nailed it. Dude, <laughs> I knew you would. I was waiting for Bao to be like, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Bao has literally said four words since we started this webinar. Yep, 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 nailed it. <laughs> Well, fuck it, cover. You made me cover too soon. Fuck, I did a fat, a fat cover, but oh it's the well. giggle, dude. It's the it's the bow giggle, man. We know he's up to no good, or he's up to really good. Yeah, here, let me post it. We know he's up to something. Dude, this thing so fast, I mean, shit. Now <clears throat> tell me, you got some covers under six, though. Something, dude. Because I was. Doing <laughs> oh no, dude. Oh, I got out of the six tens, jeans. You know what though? That's that's not bad, man. You I mean, it popped up to five fucking fifty, dude. <laughs> look at this. Look at this top take right there. That's beautiful, bro. So you got some. You got some on there. Oh, dude, you missed forty cents of downside, man. No, it went down to like uh, five seventy eight, but there's no way. You, there's no, no, there's no way you would no get way. that. Um, the the point is, guys, look what Bow just did, man. It's just I was still busy minutes. scaling. That's the problem. I I was in not that much size. I was in maybe. Let me see how much I was in. Yeah, Alex just said it, dude. There's so much meat on this left to go. Like 4,000 shares. I, I mean, I, I wanted much more than that, so. Right here, about you said 4,000 right here? 
Well, <clears throat> I have, well, there's three orders I'm doing. I, I mean, in this scale, this scale right here. Yeah. Yep. 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 This is the process guys. When something has started to break down, it's obviously within the hour where shorts have an edge. This is called reversal hour. Um, you know, this is the time to kind of press when something is maybe too inflated, something is breaking under VWAP. This is the time where when something is up, and it maybe shouldn't be this much up and it's already breaking down and setting up resistance levels like 650 is the line because of this previous resistance level after it started dropping. I mean, this is just key, man. And I know about- Yeah, I would, so I was playing this trade, man. There's no way I fucking expected 578 to come, right? Right. I'm just, like Alex said, all I'm doing is just trading the fucking channel, making my money over and over and over and over. And, you know, if the channel breaks, I can move my, my orders around, but you know, I'm not here to fucking like do the home runs because it's still way over VWAP, but now it's getting closer to VWAP. So shorts are bailed out. Longs are now looking like they're in jeopardy. So chasing a long is very dangerous, but at the same time, chasing a short is very dangerous. It's still easy to borrow and SSR. So what that means is they can still trap you because look at the volume, 356 million shares of volume. Someone yeah, could literally good. have bought up half of the float already. They could have locked the float. Who knows? They may, this is them trying to induce a trap, in my opinion. I, I completely agree, bro. And this isn't a the, the reason. The reason I come to this conclusion is because it trapped all day. And on top of that, the volume is still coming in, guys. The volume is the, the tell. If the volume dies down, let me, let me show you the chart. Dude, remember, no, I see this every single week. What do I always say? I say, guys, if it's testing the 40 level, it's always traps. If this was down here, this would never make it. But, dude, it's still testing these levels. So, of course. Look at the, look at the volume on the bottom yep. of the chart. It's still got volume. It's not trailing off. Got a ton. It's got a ton, bro. This so the is volume the is still time. going in, man. If you don't see it, so volume is going to dictate whether or not you have demand. And who knows? You know, I'm not going to speculate, but who knows? They could have bought up half the flow because, like I said, 357 million shares have traded. Dude, that's insane. And 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 here's the thing, though. The thing that scares me the most, bow out of this having volume and everything for shorts to get too aggressive, like throwing crazy size on here and expecting a fade, is bro. Today everything trapped, and this is the first day in a long time we've had some massive, massive demand and continuation. So this would be the last time on earth I would want to press on the short side and hope for faders, man. Seriously. Yep. All I'm, all I'm doing is playing my channels because you know what, man. Tomorrow when when. Or if, if it does break down tomorrow, you have a lot of meat left. So there's no, exactly. I mean, I'm not, so the shorts have been not nailing and bailing. All I'm doing is nailing and bailing over and over, right? Which is keeping me safe until the true breakdown comes. When the true breakdown comes, then I can size in comfortably and keep adding and holding longer. So as long as you're on the front side of the move, which in my opinion is still maybe, right now it's questionable because it's down to VWAP area, but before it was still front side of the move and you do not want to fucking, cherry pick because it could turn into a neuro dude how much do we know alex is literally like he's putting a bib and a fork and knife in his hands dude for this like in the next couple days like dude this is Bowser or alex's specialty in first red days when this comes bro i know alex is getting like super excited yep i'm waiting for this tomorrow when when the sucker backsides that's when you can add on all pops and holes Exactly. But if it's the front side of the move and you're short, you better be fucking nailing and billing. That's the safest way to trade a front side. Sure, it can go down. Sure, you can make money. But if you are fucking wrong, you do not have hard stops in place, you could be new rolled out. Take a look at N-U-R-O. Well, and let's say it like this, right? It's like, guys, anything can happen any day of trading, but to have a process is to have discipline so you can do this for the next hundred years, not a week of fucking glory, bro. Like, that's the whole point. Yeah, look at Nero. Wow. Dude, he hit a high of basically 39. Now it's at 23. Good God. Yep. And, but but look at the difference. Look at the difference in volume. Look at how much this is tapered off compared to um compared to semi, dude. Like, let me pull up semi again. Guys, you have to pay attention to volume, man. This is why I say it every single week. Is this testing the 40 to 50% mark over and over? It's probably not going to die. But the demand is completely tapering off on neuro right now. And look, what, look what's happening. Look yep. what is happening. Yep. 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 
Volume is demand. It's simple. Well, CMAI is still day one, guys. Just remember that day two will get much easier. Yep. Yeah, because neuro neuro is technically a day two. So this this was like this was like a gap of day two, pretty much. You know what I mean? Um, semi is literally just day one. So we'll see what it does tomorrow, right? Right now, until then, all you do is nail and bail. This is MIC process. Base hits, stop going for home runs, stop going for grand slams when you don't have a massive, massive edge and you will last the test of time. It's, it's when you throw 100,000 shares right here at 620 and you expect it to go to 380 and then it doesn't and it goes to fucking nine. This is why you lose and you can't have a trading career. That's the point. It's just, man, you either break rules or you don't break rules in trading. There's two kinds of traders. There's discipline and there's non-discipline. It's it's like so so take a look at take a look at how I handle stop losses, guys. We make so many videos on this. That's how you handle uh, being undisciplined because every trader becomes undisciplined from time to time because it's human nature. But make sure you have the fences around you. And we talk about this all the time. No one talks about risk management, but we've been stressing that for years now. And that's what that's the secret of keeping you in the game, and that's the secret to every long term successful trade is risk management, guys. There's just no two ways about it, man. Seriously. Now, did you say you were gonna, you were posting something? Um, no. <laughs> oh, I thought you were, oh, never mind. I thought you were posting something about hard stuff. No, uh, yeah, no. The key is the key is risk management, guys. Like literally, dude. I'm not kidding. If you were shorting on semi, you know, during a reversal hour, and you were shorting, you know, this outer level, th this could continue to nine if it really breaks out on a massive volume. You got to make sure you're cutting if it really does break. Like that's the whole point about staying in the game. You can always get back in. So when this fails and tanks and puts in a top, if you were the guy stopping out, look, you can always get back in. That's the point in trading is always having another round of go time, right? Yeah. Uh, notice volume tapered off, so it faded. Yep. Definitely, man. Definitely. Let's take a look at Neuro. Doesn't mean Neuro's a short now. Who knows? This stock is fucking crazy. The VWAP is 2266, so... It's one of those stocks I warn everybody not, not, not to trade because you know what, man? It's not fucking worth it. There's so many easier plays out there because if you're wrong on Euro, you're going to get fucking your ass kicked. And once again, you have to use hard stops, guys, or max lady loss. Otherwise, you're going to get killed when you're wrong. Yeah, because like think about, think about the morning bow. Like think about a new trader who's a week old and comes in and he really doesn't know what he's doing. And all he did, bro, was throw a hundred shares on a small account. Think about it. Like a hundred shares in your mind when you're new is nothing, right? But dude, look at this range and you're, you're not even accounting for the possibility of halts. And dude, you're down a lot of money. Like this is the shit that new traders don't get and they try to do themselves and then they lose a lifetime membership at MIC on one trade. And then they come to us asking for discounts because they're like, now I really don't know what I'm doing. So what I do, we're like, dude, you could have saved yourself. Oh, oh, oh. And Neuro was easy to borrow. That's, that's the point. That's the point. So when new traders come in or they, or they don't come in and they're like, dude, I'll, I'll you know, pay for an education when I make it in trading. Hey, let me short Neuro at 30. It's just, it's crazy. It's asinine. It's very backwards thinking. You guys just don't know the pitfalls or the dangers or anything to look for yet. This is a language, man. This is a language. So I hope, you know, everybody that's an MIC member, you know, learns before they put their, their money to test. You know, you learn a little bit, you do a SIM account in the beginning, not too long. So you don't get, you know, be, it becomes a crutch, but you do start with small size and you go the evolution of, you know, this stuff too. And as Tay says, you know, we have long and short swing traders as well, guys. So, you know, whether you work a job in the mornings or maybe midday or maybe all day, and you only have a little bit of leeway to be a trader, even that little leeway, we're going to have something at MIC that's going to benefit you, whether it's long expiration dates on, you know, options trades, or it's maybe small size swinging, or maybe it's just swinging in general like Tay or Edson do. The point is, is we cater to everybody. But you got to learn the process. You, you can't just go in willy-nilly and expect to get good results, right? Oh, man. Dude, I could talk about all, all day on something like Neuro. That's just the dangers, man. They, they just don't fucking get it, dude. XTN, do you guys have any questions for us on what we've been talking about so far? Like anybody, any members have some questions? Uh, actually, I think, uh, hold on, let me pull up YouTube real quick and see. Maybe you guys have any questions on YouTube as well? Can you please look at AMST stock? What was that? 
AMST? The fuck is this? What's your question on that? <laughs> Bro, this, does this even trade? Don't get married to the company in news. Play price action. This is not doing anything. What, what, what is the question on AMST? How do you trade this, bro? How do you trade it? Why would, dude, the only way, what, be specific. How do you trade it? He must be stuck long, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like when's the last time it ran, you know, like. Uh, you, you have to draw your lines, man. I mean, you have to understand the concept of a death line. Ah, I see. 611.21 is when it ran. You're probably stuck long. No offense, buddy. I'm just, I'm just, this is very random. And now you're like, what do I do with it? Dude, it's not trading. You got, you got caught in a pump in them. I'm sorry. Like, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, right? So there's no way to trade this shit. You have to learn when to take the loss, guys. That's the, that's the key, both long and short risk management, risk management. So when you start learning, learn risk management, maybe even first before you learn the lines, learn how to fucking, you know, <laughs> risk management because I that's the problem with the diamond hands guys the diamond hand meme people they have no <laughs> risk management you know they got lucky a few times but shit dude never expect a stock to ever do what those meme stocks do that's like once in a generational move yeah unfortunately all these crypto guys are trying to teach you in stocks what they're doing in crypto and it, it, it just doesn't work guys they're two very different ideologies because in one may like it's just different of what crypto stands for versus stocks which are actual securities crypto is not a security by definition and it's just different rules man it's very different stuff so the movement of a stock is not to hold forever like, especially as a day trader, but the whole movement of crypto is like, hey, we're going to, this is, this is deflationary. We're going to hold this forever. There's a finite supply, blah, 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 blah. Then you guys get wrecked when you hold AMST from the last pump and dump and you're holding it 30 cents when it was at $7 highs. Like that's the shit that I'm talking about, man. So uh, as Stan says, taking a loss is a good thing to do when it is controlled and planned. And let's, let's go back a couple steps really quick to what I just said. Um, guys, NSPR. This is what I just said about trying to not push too much on the short side right now because this market is finally giving us neuros, semis, NSPRs. This is, you don't even have the short edge right now. We're in the last hour of the day. You have one hour till market close. You do not have a huge short edge. So it's nail and bail. You don't hold for home runs. You don't get aggressive on size. This is the shit, the time-based trading that will make you a good trader or it will break the stubborn traders. Uh, that's my two cents on that. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, let me see on, let's see. Come on guys. I need to have more questions than that. All right. Nobody on YouTube. Let's see. Let's see if the members do. What's the news on NSPR? What the hell is that? There's so many traps out there, guys. <laughs> Not seeing any company specific news to justify the price action. <laughs> oh, dude, this is when you know you've got a crazy market ready player one is when things do this shit on no news and they're doing it across the board, bro. This is when I really don't push as a short seller. How to identify slow in a hot market bond. Number one, buddy. We, okay, I'll just pull this screen over one second. Does it really, does it really matter slow, hot? cold, lukewarm process keeps everything in check. Yeah, literally just process, process, process. But guys, when you have- seven, why, why are you changing, deviating the process? Exactly. But when you have seven plays, I mean, I guess you can call that hot. You have more action. It's just more plays. It's more volatility. Not yeah, every- It doesn't, doesn't mean that you stop being disciplined. Exactly. If it's slow, you know? In actuality, if it's slow, you should be more disciplined. Yep, 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 seriously. In fact, um, Val, I would argue, arguably say on a long enough timeline, if we track the statistics, I would say we do way better in a market that has this many runners versus a market that only has one or two because everyone's so crowded on it long and short that it's just very hard when you only have two runners a day. It's a lot simpler and more straightforward when you have one thing taking all of attention and you have four side chicks or two things taking attention. You have two side chicks. Like the more, I like the more runners, the better. Because, because there's so much opportunity, right? Yeah, but does, yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, in hot market, you have more opportunity. So it doesn't mean you should trade, trade differently. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't even mean you trade more. It just means you may have a better opportunity or a more clear edge on. on I, I, I trade when the setup comes. 
So more, so when it's a hot, we don't say it's a hot market, there's more runners and stuff, but when the setup comes, it's the setup comes, right? You, and so if you're a short seller and it's a hot market, things running, great running, your process should have stopped you out. So the risk management doesn't change because it's a hot or slow market. The risk management is risk management. The reason why I don't like the word hot market, hot market implies there's tons of opportunity versus not opportunity. Guys, a, a hot market is really just saying an active market. It's saying there's just a lot of movement. No, no, know, I, I, I think I think people, when, when they say hot market, means they're making money. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I mean, fuck, if you're making money, it's a hot market. If it's, if you're losing money in a hot market, you can say it sucks. It's a shitty market. So <laughs> yeah, you, I'll go. Yeah. I mean, I, I see those guys all the time. Oh man, this is the worst fucking market in the world. I'm like, dude, I'm doing great. You know, <laughs> it's a great market. It's a great market to me. So, you know, there's no such thing as a hot or cold market. It depends on how you trade it, guys. Yeah, in a hot market, you can still lose your fucking ass. In a slow market, you can still be making millions of dollars. Yeah, guys, you're going to get traders who will call a hot market one runner a day or 10 runners a day. It's really They, they call hot markets only because they're up, guys. I mean, exactly. Shit. If they're fucking down and the fucking and the market is ripping up, it's a shitty ass market. <laughs> it's manipulation, right? It's I, hate, so I, I, hate, I hate it when the people talk about it hot or cold. They're like, dude, did you lose today? Yeah, I lost it. You know, it's a cold it a market. That's <laughs> <laughs> a cold market. <laughs> There's 10 low hanging fruits. Nah, dude, it was a cold market. <laughs> so, oh, shit, that's so funny, man. <laughs> you guys have any questions? Any questions? Uh, I think James may have. It said, uh, yeah, I do first bounces. Is it natural? It's natural because I bet the way I started trading was I was a long bias trader. Just because I short more than I long nowadays doesn't mean that I am not a long bias trader when, when the opportunity comes. Definitely. Guys, it's not, it's not about bias. It's about what does the chart have an edge in? Does it have a, is it front side? Does it have a long bounce out of it? Does it have a first bounce or a VWAP reclaim? Or does it have a death line short? The chart should write you a love letter of what your edge is. Why do you think we have all of these? Hold on, hold on. Let me go, let me go to the slide. Why do you think we, we have very specific setups for what the chart is telling you your edge is in? The chart's going to tell you one of these is active or it's going to say the other four aren't. That's the point. It's not what Bao wants the chart to be. It's what, Bao, it's what the chart is telling Bao it is. Does that make sense? Did I say that right? Uh, I'm like the pitcher in bold during him in the beginning. I did not see that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, hot, hot market is relative to your PL. Exactly, bro. Yep, MIC process is all about trading what gives us an edge. If the chart is telling you it's a short, guys, it's a short. Why would you why would you want to fight common sense? If the chart's telling you, hey, dipshit, you know, stop fighting short, it's a long, it's a long, bro. That's that's just the someone way asked, that... someone asked about can you look at AMST? I think you're trying to pump AST because you're long, right, guy? Yeah, he had said and that they, one earlier. Uh, Dude, the, the shit don't fucking move. Stop using us to try to spam stocks, please. You try to learn or you try to pump your own play. Oh, did he do it a so second start, time? Start learning, guys, on how to trade versus just trying to pump your shit because that's not how you trade. So here's a question. How about LXU? Is LXU fading today or tomorrow? That's, <laughs> that's the question. So number one. How the fuck do I know? Number one, how do we know we can't predict the future? And why are you trading something that has no volume, dude? Because he's a pumper, bro. Bro, guys, Sam, dude. I'm guys, not come on, man. I'm trying to give you tough this? love here, guys. You, you, you have the opportunity to ask on how to properly trade. And you're fucking trying to, trying to pump and dump shit. Bro, look at the chart volume. What the fuck are you trading, bro? This is not tradable. Like, I don't get it, dude. I don't get like this is not a tradable stock, dude. There's no edge. There's no movement, dude. It's a 50-50 split that this goes to fucking 10 tomorrow or six. Who knows and who cares, man? It's not tradable. You guys, you have you have to learn stock selection. These guys are fucking blowing up because they're not trading the right fucking stocks. Let me let me say it like this, guys. Let me say it like this. When you come into MIC and you read Alex's watch list every single morning, if, quote unquote, if 
you are trading anything in the in the early morning, but these stocks that are on radar, son, you're gambling. You're gambling or you're not trading small caps. You're either gambling or you're not trading small caps. Number two, the only thing that you are allowed to trade that is not on this list because it makes sense there's an edge is something that comes because a pumper does it in the open. By the open, we have a finite number of plays where you have a serious edge as a day trader. So when you're looking at AMST, when you're looking at LXU, you are not playing what professional day traders are playing. You're trading a bias of what you're stuck in, got pumped in, got left in a week ago, have a bias of wanted to go up because you know a company insider. Unless you're trading something on this list or something that in the immediate open gets on radar because now everyone's got it on attention, you are a gambler. I, I've probably never said it better than that. I'm glad this is recorded. <laughs> yeah, so you have a very finite number of plays, but that's all you need. That's the point. Everybody wants to find the next Apple or the next cure for AIDS when really... <laughs> Oh my God, Sam, that's funny, dude. He goes, LOL, I think I need an MIC membership for the watch list. Bro, text my line, buddy. Text my line. 213-458-5998. I will help you. I will get you in the club. Dude, I promise you, we will teach you what to look for, man. The one thing I can guarantee is that once you come into MIC, man, you're going to know that LXU is not something to trade. You're going to know what you should be looking at. Well, well LXU has been moved up since like $4.80, so that's why he's looking at it. Yeah, but the, key, but the key is there's no volume, no movement, and right now it's a coin flip whether or not it's going to go up or down. But tomorrow's day three, so it may be more interesting on day three. Yep, yep, correct. And this is, you know, anything like this, guys, like LSB Industrials, I don't like titles like this because that's like, it could be commodity, it could be real, it could be like a holdings company. Things like this is just, you want a piece of crap company that is just up and wants to dilute on people or find a reason to keep going higher, like the, the neuros and the semis and the things like that. This is just, this is just not even something to talk about, to be honest. Yeah, you'll get it, man. Text me, text me, bro. We'll get you in the club, man. Um, let's see what Semi's doing. Or let's see what Neuro's doing. What's, what's Neuro doing? Yeah, still just kind of teetering around, man. Day two, tomorrow's day three. Um, hold on. I think we got some questions. To make money like a doctor, you have to study like one, and they have a lot to study. Haha, <laughs> funny. The, uh, let's go to Semi real quick, because I know some people are talking about that. Um, <laughs> Jake. Jake, one of our new members. What's up, Jake? Jake is a guy that I was talking to yesterday. He's brand new to the trading community. Guys, give Jake a warm welcome if you're a member. Seriously, Jake is here to learn the appropriate way, man. He's new to trading, and I want to guide this guy right as he doesn't have bad habits yet. This is one of the number one things I love about Jake, or I'm sorry, people like Jake, is Jake does, did not come from a service where he developed all these terrible habits, in which case he doesn't have to unlearn things. Now it's just like, really like soak it up like a sponge on what you should be focusing on what you should be doing so dude not only welcome to the family because we were on a call yesterday is uh, he goes i'm actually glad for these youtube comments so i know the stuff that bugs you guys because because again when you're new guys you don't know what to ask and i get that i really do get that so I, I love it, man. We're, we're here to help the guy who's brand new day one. We're here, to, we're here to help the guy that's been trading 10 years and still having trouble. Like we, we don't discriminate against any time frame, <laughs> skin color, religion, anything, man, anything. Trading is a profession and it needs to be treated as such. Uh, question, would NLST be a good first red day? Again, again, brother, uh, Mike, you just, it's, it's a liquid brother. There's, there's, I mean, when you have something that drops like this, like this kind of drop and then reclaim, I, this is just a liquid it's on. There's no way to trade this for the most part, in my opinion. I mean, Val, how else would you say it? Uh, NLST. Yeah. It's just, it's just not really tradable because there's not enough volume. There's just no real movement, man. It's just a liquid. Uh, by nature. Uh, I wouldn't know what to do with this. I would say 980. Draw your lines, guys. So the, the answer to most of these questions, just draw your lines. Stop thinking about first red day, first red day all the time, right, guys? Uh, the most simple way to do is line to line. Figure out what the lines are, what the resistance is, and then you can go from there. Yeah, and sorry, guys, if we seem a little sometimes passionate or a little hard on you. We don't mean a this call. Is not a, this is not a true – an LST is not a true first day kind of setup. Yeah, this is, yeah, not, not really it, it at all. Could have, it could have been yesterday, but it didn't happen. 
and and here's the thing like i know what you're looking at bro i know you're loving the i i know you're loving the daily chart for hey when's you know because a lot dude and this is the thing i actually really quick rant on this this is what i did when i was <laughs> isaac i love the passion this is what I did when I was a brand new trader. Here's what the furus teach you so incorrectly. You need to unlearn it all. Hey, this stock is up for so many days. When's going to be the day when we get that big red tank candle? But guess what they don't fucking teach you? There's no volume in this, dude. This is untradeable. So you never know if it's right now, if it's 20 more days up. Guys, look at this daily chart. You're going to look at this and be like, hey, this looks like it's a house of cards. It's going to have that really big pull. Yeah. Yeah, Let's the, time the, it. The, Let's the, time it. Yeah, Tosh is right because the, the lack of liquidity makes it like like be gamed by market makers. So they can game it. They can, they can trick you into the first threat day and they just bounce right back up on air. Well, and the thing is, you know, Bao, because I did this when I was new, man. I remember I was literally part of a chat room where all I thought trading was, was find these things. Then if you could time the first red day, but again, that's not day trading. You are trying to guess the future. Like, okay, if I could time the big red candle, guys, there's no edge as a day trader. So how the hell do even veteran traders like Bao, Alex, and myself, or a lot of our mods even know when that's going to be? There's no edge. There's no one trading this. You can't time the future, man. You can time the next trade that has an edge, and this has no edge. Man, so someone, someone asked studying charts after hours. You can if you know what you're studying for. So first, you need to figure out what you got to study for before you study it, right? Because you're looking at the chart blind, and you have no clue what you're looking at. It doesn't really yeah. help. Yeah, definitely. So study the the uh, watch the videos instead of studying the charts when you're starting out, because the charts make no sense to you. You don't know what the strategies are, what the patterns are, what to look for. You know, you know, I love what Stan just said right here, brother. This is, it's kind of blunt, but it's very true. If you have to ask, then you do not know how to trade yet. It is blunt. It is blunt, but we're not here to sugarcoat. I very much agree with this, guys, because I remember when I was new, man, and I would really ask things like, is, you know, is NLST this or AMST? And I just remember like thinking that, you know, if I'm asking these questions, maybe I'm not ready to trade real money yet. And that's okay. It's just eliminating your own ego and not even taking anything personal. It's literally just saying, you know what, dude, if people like Bauer are coming into the day, so freaking, look at this freaking pumper on YouTube. Oh my God. Take your crypto bullshit out of here, bro. Uh, bro. <laughs> Why is always so bad with a fucked up name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's pumping his stupid ass crypto. I'll you know, show him a moon. I'll show him a full moon. <laughs> Come over. Hey, I'll, Mitty, I'll Mitty. DM you my full moon. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, here's here's your crypto pump. Nobody buy crypto. <laughs> there's your pump. <laughs> okay, here, here's my advice on fucking crypt, crypto. Never buy any fucking crypto that has the word moon in it or come in it. Okay? <laughs> Fuck. Anything with a fucking moon. You, you know it's a fucking pump and dump. Anything that says moon stays so far away from it's ridiculous. Freaking idiot on YouTube. Fucking moon dog, moon donkey. Bunch come of moon, moon nuts. Come, come and moon. Avoid those. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me, just avoid crypto in general, but <laughs> <laughs> in life, avoid come and avoid moons. <laughs> HR, HR. Oh shit. Oh shit. Uh, yeah, Stan, I completely agree with that, buddy. Um, let's see, NSPR, is that, what's that doing? NSPR, yes, this is finally tanking a little bit, but again, guys, this is not something you really have too much of an edge right now. It ran the last hour of the day. It had no volume prior in the media day, so this is really all you're basing it off. Again, when you see something like this, if you feel yourself becoming, you know, a dog chasing a mailman, just, just, that's when you shouldn't be trading. Wait, this might be, you know, this might gap up tomorrow and really have an edge, but right now it's like, you know, um, question from Jeremy. What's the text line thing to get on a call with you, Tosh? Brother, just text me 213-458-5997, or you can go to the website and you can do what's called a free consultation and uh, literally just book a call with me, brother. It goes through Calendly. It's very professional. It's, uh, I'm, I'm usually to the minute uh, at any time I have a call and just literally just book a call with me, man. Unless, unless you feel you can get a couple questions out quickly on text, I'm, I'm here to answer either way. <laughs> Sam, he goes, I think I might buy this moon protocol. <laughs> he's, I can already tell he's funny. 
Sam, you got to come in the club, man, and learn how to trade, bro. That's funny. Uh, when going through the study guide, should you stick to the order or bounce around with what interests you? Sean, that is actually a really good question. And I'll give you at least my two cents. Faye did so good on this structure. I wouldn't deviate brother. I really wouldn't because she starts with the appropriate way basics, MIC process, how to draw. I would really follow it in the exact structure. I know in the, every now and then people are like, okay, I read the basics. I read the MIC process, but I really want to do the death line. I really think you should go from just suck it up, do the work. I know it's a lot. It's a lot of content, but dude, you're not going to regret it because here's the thing that people don't get. And this is me coming from more of, um, uh, more of a education educator standpoint rather than a trader. The reason why she did so good is she did all the work and I don't want people cutting corners. Uh, I tried to in my early days as a trader and I just really, really wish I didn't cut corners because it did develop some bad habits. So I really recommend, man, you're going to know how to short better because you know how to long better. Or, or because you know how to long first, or you know how VWAP works, instead of going how to draw a line straight to, you know, death line short, you're, you're going to go through the appropriate conditions of every kind of price action. That's what I recommend. It's, it's, it's what Travers said, build a foundation, then master your niche. Building the foundation is watching every video in order. That's my opinion. That's a good question, man. That's a great question. Um, Tosh, not a question, but more of a sta statement. MIC should charge more for how much knowledge is provided every day. Jester, I, th I did. I appreciate that, man. As much as I appreciate that, uh, we, I, I, you know, dude, I feel like MIC is worth $10,000 in membership, but we don't, we, it's not about the money, man. It's about making the best membership possible and at least price to a point where we can weed out all the idiots and the moon protocol idiots. <laughs> and it's to weed out those people, but it's also to be affordable enough that, that 18 year olds and 17 year olds can learn trading man while they're in community college, literally. So we, we try to do it as fair as we can, man. But I hear you, brother. I hear you. I'm glad you're getting, I'm glad you're getting a lot of uh, value out of it, man. That's the only thing that matters to us seriously at the end of the day. And, and, and I'll say something on that, you know, I'll say something as, as we always say, the reason why we got such a big team guys is I'm like one of the number one guys to not take this personally is you just learn over the years. I used to, in the beginning, I was like, man, like, I, he, the fucker really doesn't like me or et cetera, et cetera. Maybe he doesn't like Bauer. Maybe he doesn't like it. Like what you're not always going to like someone, right. Or identify with them. So if you don't like the way I teach or you don't like the way Bay does, or, or it, you got a whole team. And that's the most beautiful thing about MIC is you have so many options to learn. Some people literally might not like the sound of my voice and want to learn from me. I see YouTube videos in real estate where I'm like, dude, I'd love to learn from this real estate guy, but I don't like the way he sounds. So fuck him. <laughs> it's just human nature, dude. So you're not always going to like everybody. You're not always going to agree with their teaching style. That's why we have so many options for you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Stock Slayer. You're going to, and, and here's the thing that I don't take it personally. If you didn't like the way I, you know, talked about price action, you might love the way Aloha talks about it. And that's the beautiful thing is your, your options at MIC. Um, Bao, question for you on YouTube from Joe. Hey, Bao, is it still safe to play first bounce on a day two play? Depends on the chart. Remember, <laughs> day two plays could still be very bullish. It depends on the chart. It depends on very, so take a look at VWAP. The key is to look at VWAP. Dude, the, 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 guys, when, when you go, hey, can I short this or can I long this? Remember, if you predefine your plan, your risk management, you can trade anything technically you want, but you have to predefine everything as Bao's always talking about. So while there's less odds of longs working on day two, if a perfect setup or perfect criteria comes on a day two where you can get a first bounce out of it, it's totally possible. And there are some trades where maybe you should take because it's showing that much strength or relative strength compared to most of the day twos that run and just kind of fail out, right? There's very different day twos. There's one that's super duper strong that goes in a day three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you have, you know, really, really, really broken down day twos where you're like, dude, if you long this, you're just gambling, right? So there's many different examples. Uh, trying to get to all the questions, guys. One sec. AEHR, 
good example of following rules about low hanging fruit. If it doesn't work in the first 15 minutes, get out. Correct, bro. Correct. This is something that took me a long time to learn the first time I ever tackled low hanging fruit. You got a window. You got like a 20 minute window for this fucker to work out, dude. 15, 20 minutes. And then it does this. It just gets look because because look at the look at the volume, dude. Like algos can do what they want with this. Like random volume can mean someone can accumulate. Like this is why you need to be quick and precise on low hanging fruit. I agree. Um what package of DOS should I use on my Cobra Venom account? Be spry. What's up, buddy? Just contact them directly, bro. They, they get them on the phone. They can answer every kind of broker question possible. Just get all the level two stuff you need. All the level two stuff. It's just basic NASDAQ level two and, and charting. But, but if you have like really specific broker questions, dude, I'm telling you, just get them on the phone, man. They'll, they'll help big time. Because they got a whole different kind of lingo than traders talk. You know, they're brokers. <laughs> guys, guys, it's very simple. For broker questions, please contact the broker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of simple. Hey, how do you use this in this? I mean, it's fuck out. It, for for car automotive help, please call the fucking <laughs> dealer. <laughs> Hit the mechanic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I know we know a lot of shit, but but you know, come on. <laughs> no, that's funny, man. That's funny. We, we got a professional in every every scenario. So just, just call the professionals or whatever the scenario is, right? Yeah, look at this. Wow, AEHR, man. You don't want to be the guy fighting, 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 fighting. And then, you, and then by th this time, you're like, ah, shit. And now I got to cut it. And I just, you know, I just lost $2, right? Like, you don't want to be that guy. Um, any good free tools you recommend for a day trader on a budget? I use TradingView and Finviz. Finviz is great, bro. I'm not familiar with what TradingView is, but, um, you know, or I'm sorry. Um, uh, what was it? A tra oh, 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 I see what he said. You mean TraderView. Is, is that what he meant? I don't know. I don't know what TradingView is, but TraderView is, is really good. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, maybe trading view is a different thing. Remember, man, all tools are tools unless you know how to use it. That's very true. That's very true. Bro, I I remember when I was when I was a brand new trader and I was like, if I get a if I get a freaking scanner, I'm gonna be really good. I got a scanner and I was like, what the fuck do I look for? <laughs> Alex, let me bring you on, buddy. Hold on one second. A scanner, a scanner is useless unless you know what to look for exactly, how to trade it. All a, all a scanner will do is give you incredible FOMO and you'll lose quicker. You'll have more stick, you'll have more choices to lose faster. Alex, are you are you literally is your tag name under this literally just Alex? Because I don't see Alex Tamiz or AT09. Are you literally just Alex? Oh, cool. One sec. You should be good to go, buddy. Yo, you hear me? Oh yeah. What up? What's up, man? Nothing, bro. I'm listening to you talking and you know, bro, I'm thinking to myself while I'm here, bro, while I'm listening, let me talk to you guys about like what my plan is going to be for tomorrow. And I'm going to keep it pretty vague so that non-members that are not in here don't get the secret sauce. Whereas I'll explain it more in detail tomorrow. Nice. But um, basically what I'm looking for guys is I'm looking for which stocks are broken today and looking to attack them tomorrow with a little bit more size. So what I see today is I see LEXX, that's a failed runner. I see MEDS, that's a failed runner. And MRIN, that is a failed runner. So now all of a sudden I have three stocks to choose from tomorrow and I could hit them all. I could hit one of them. I could hit none of them. So those number one, those are my top, top watches because Hey, those are the ones that already broke down today. And chances are, if it bounces, everyone that was stuck today long is now going to be a seller on a bounce. So that's number one. Those are the stocks that I'm watching. So let me tell you, I guess, simply what my plan is for the other stocks, right? Because I'm going to talk to you about what lines I'm going to use, what, uh, what support resistance to use tomorrow on the watch list. So I'm not going to give that away today. Um, but basically those are the top stocks that I'm watching. So what am I going to do about the CEMI and what am I going to do about the neuro, right? So well, those are basically called low hanging fruit. <laughs> yeah. Stop telling them the secret, pal, motherfucker. <laughs> no, but this is the name. You, you're telling the secret. Just tell the name of the, the strategy. <laughs> I know, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to walk a fine line, man, because this stuff is what the members are here for. And I don't want to kind of give too much away, but yeah. anyway, so 
So that's that's that, right? And that's if you notice what Bao was trading today, I saw his motherfucker nail Lex like four times. <laughs> I saw him trade so many times because even on day one, he found an edge there, right? So that's number one. So those are gonna be my top watches tomorrow. Those are our stocks that were broken today that are, hopefully if they bounce tomorrow, they'll be good. And that's number one. So number two is neuro and CEMI. So on a stock like this, on a stock like those, it doesn't make sense to make a plan today because I don't know if they're going to cure cancer tomorrow. I don't know if the CEO is going to go to jail tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. So I'd rather wait until I wake up in the morning and I see what the price action is telling me. And then I make a plan. In an ideal world, guys, in an ideal world, what would make me super, super comfortable shorting these stocks tomorrow is if they were removed off the easy to borrow list. So number one, CEMI is not going to be on SSR tomorrow. So that's already an edge. Number two is if these stocks are removed from easy to borrow, people are going to forget about it. People aren't going to care about it. And people aren't going to be as um, short crowded on it. So if I see these stocks not being easy to borrow, I'm going to get excited. That's a scenario one. Scenario two is let's say they are easy to borrow. Let's say they are there. The, the plan would be to look at where these stocks fail today. On CEMI, I'm looking at every whole dollar and half dollar. This thing is failing or supporting. 550, it's supporting. $6, it's rejecting. 650, it's rejecting. $7, it's rejecting. So tomorrow, let's say it opens up pretty flat like where it is now. I keep it simple, $6.657 to scale in short. And if it tanks to $5, I'll look to short 556. That's it, right? That's it. I'm trying to, a lot of, I was mentioning this in yesterday's Instagram live video. And I was saying that everyone tries to overcomplicate shit. They yep. bring out mathematical equations. They bring out a protractor. They bring out a scientific calculator. That's what right. I'm doing is I'm trying to do the least amount of work. CEMI, whole and half dollar marks. That's it, right? That's number one. That's it. So that one's going to be interesting because CEMI is a sympathy play to the head of the stake, Neuro. So we have LEXX, MRIN, MEDS, primary, CEMI, another one that's kind of like a secondary sympathy play. So now all of a sudden I have four stocks and the main head of the stake, Neuro. For 99% of traders, guys, even if the stock tanks, you as a let's say a trader that's been around for, let's say two, less than two years, that stock's too risky for you. I just gave you five different stocks to trade. Why are you trying to nail the head of the snake? So on something like Neuro, I'm going to let the experts with $20 million accounts, $30 million accounts, try to figure it out. While I sit here and like a, like a, like a sniper in the woods, attack the stocks that I like. So that's my plan for tomorrow. My plan for tomorrow is focus on the stocks that are broken if the hot stock neuro is broken too, so be it. It's an index for the rest. And you know what? The best case scenario is yes, if these things are off, easy to borrow. But an even better case scenario is if there's a new runner tomorrow. Oh, if man. If a new runner tomorrow, man, oh my God, you better fucking hide everything from me because I'm going to be attacking <laughs> these stocks that we're uh, trading today. And that's the thing that you have to remember. I've been trading for seven years, guys. So basically another word for it is uh, we have videos on this to put (laughs) me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the truth is, guys, I've been trading for a long time. And what I learned is traders have a short attention span. We're like, we look at hot chicks. And as soon as we see a new hot chick, we forget about the previous one. When that previous hot chick is a better opportunity. So in a perfect world scenario, in a perfect trading scenario, we get a new runner tomorrow. Because everyone missed MRI, everyone missed neuro, everyone missed CEMI, that they're going to focus their attention there. And that gives people like us that are paying attention to these stocks to have an edge. So, I mean, that these, the last 10 minutes that I told you is what makes people go from, you know, making $100 a day to making $10,000 a day is stock selection. Like Bao said, you need to know what stocks to trade. I'm seeing these people talk about stocks that, have no volume. I'm seeing these people stock talk about stocks that have no edge. And when I see that stuff, I automatically know that you've been pumped to. I automatically know that you are screwed because you're following these alerts. And what I pride myself on is my stock selection. Bao and I are very good at knowing what stocks to trade because we've been burned too many times. So stock selection is what I mentioned at the beginning of this. The broken stocks, stocks that people don't care about, Stocks that people forget about. And you know what? I, 
I'm not going to say I guarantee because that's a strong word, but I'm pretty certain that we're going to have a new runner tomorrow because of how fucking crazy today was. It might not be anything as nuts as neuro, might not be as nuts as CEMI, but I guarantee whoever missed out today is going to have so much fucking FOMO. They're going to buy anything that's fucking moving, man. And shit, man, they do that. It's better for us because now we're going to have an edge. Dude, the thing, the thing I love about Alex coming on here and showing you guys his mastery is this fucker can, dude, go in 10 different scenarios in his head. Man, I don't know how he does it, dude. It's insane. It always blows my mind. But Alex can see every corner of every scenario, the low-hanging fruit, the hot chicks, the moves that haven't even started yet, and the ones that are broken down, dude. You guys right. have got a serious the, plan. The, the, process, the process is the same exact thing every day. This is a different symbol that you're trading. The process is the same. The process of getting going from a hot chick to a low hanging fruit is exactly the same. Yep. So today's hot chick, once it breaks down, becomes a low hanging fruit. It's, a, it's the same thing over and over and over. Yep. Yep. So I love it, man. man. That was really good, Alex. That's basically, man, I want to give you guys a quick cheat code. And tomorrow, guys, in the watch list, I'll put on everything. I'll put on all the details. I'll put on, um, you know, the lines I'm looking for. I'll put everything. And you know what, guys? The thing that I really like about, you know, what we have here in this community is the lines I'm giving you, the watches I'm giving you is the exact watch that I'm executing on. I'm not telling you some stocks to trade that I'm not trading. I'm basically telling you fucking everything, man. So use the watch list to your advantage, you know, focus, be disciplined, stick to the process. And, you know, we should make some money tomorrow. Dude. I love it, man. Really well said, Alex. That was really good, dude. Yep. So any questions, man, I'm, I'll be here for like now five, 10 minutes. Uh, so let's, let's do some questions, guys. Um, guys, I hope real quick before we start the question, I hope you can see that there's a major difference in what Alex just broke down versus, Hey, will NLST break down tomorrow? I wonder guys, there's no wonder in veteran traders. There's no fucking wonder. This is a language that's methodical. It's, it's a fucking business, bro. This is a business. business, bro. There's, there's no way you could be doing the shit that we're doing. Like the amount of money that we're making, you know, fucking bro, almost $2 million this year. That's more than most CEOs, most fucking hedge funds, most everything. No fucking shit. It's a business, man. It is a business that you have to take seriously. And when I show up and when I sit at my desk, I'm all fucking business, bro. Because I know that if done correctly, this could change our fucking lives. Yep. I've traded with Alex in person. I've seen him in New Jersey in front of his computers. He means business, baby. He's not Don't fuck with me, bro. When I'm at the desk, don't fuck with me. You know? <laughs> don't poke his ear. Don't kiss his neck. Don't do shit, dude. Not that I've tried those things, but remember guys, when you're trading, there's someone on the other side of the screen that you're trading against. Trying to when you're you buying up. something, when you're shorting something, when you're fucking doing anything on something, there's another guy on the other side of the screen. And your job is to be fucking smarter than that guy. Your job is to be more disciplined than that guy because your goal, bro, is to be able to beat him at this game, right? God, dude, psychological warfare, to be honest, man. That's what it is. It's psychological really warfare, bro. This shit's not easy. No it's one's being risky. Guys, if, if you want, if you want to, you know, career results, you got to treat it like a career. We say it all the time. In fact, I think Bao made this famous is look, if you treat trading like a hobby, good luck. You will always get hobby results. Little up, little down, little up, little down. You got to, you got to take this fucking seriously, dude. And, and, and when if, it, you, if you, if, I mean, some people treat, most people in my opinion, treat trading as gambling, as entertainment. And so that's the results they get. Exactly. I completely agree. Yeah, man. Trading, trading is a blessing, guys. It is a blessing to be able to do what we do. And, you know, sometimes I kick my ass. Sometimes I kick Bao's ass because, you know, Bao tells me, bro, I made $6,000 today and I'm fucking bored. Motherfucker, bro, you're making $6,000 a day bored? Like, that's, you are lucky. You are blessed. So remember, guys, if you're treating this as a hobby, the guy on the other side of the screen is me and I'm treating it like a business. And if you want to compete against me, if you want to compete against Bao, if you want to compete against some of these traders out there, I mean, you better start taking it seriously. You really better because, I mean, this market is not going to last forever. I don't know how much longer it's going to last, but it's not going to last forever. And, you know, the sooner you learn this, the more money you're going to make. And, hey, if you do this right, you might have to only work a few years of your life to never fucking work again, man. That's very possible.
Guys, any last minute questions while you have all three of us? Any last minute questions? Any questions specifically for Alex? Because he's going to go in a couple minutes. Yeah, I got to get the hell out of here, man. He's got a tomahawk waiting for him somewhere. I know I it. Wish, bro. See, that's the thing, bro. Like Bout says all the time, too, is we're always here busy helping you guys. We don't fucking eat. We don't do anything. It's 3.42 p.m. I've been up since 6 a.m. So what is that? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Almost 10 hours I've been awake, and I've had coffee in my system and tea. No food, no nothing, because I'm trying to be here to help. And that's what Bao does too, man. So Same, understand that you know, we're taking this seriously. Understand that we're doing this because we want to help you guys. So if we're doing this, at least help yourselves a little bit too and you know, take it seriously. Yeah, dude, seriously. And again, I want to give a special shout out to Bao because this guy does so much behind the scenes for you guys that you guys don't understand. You know, Bao doesn't need to be doing this. MIC doesn't pay Bao money. Like it's, we don't really make much money from this. All the money goes back into marketing. So I just want to say to Bao that the things that he's doing to help you guys, it could be one day all of a sudden this guy wakes up and says, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, and then you know what? You guys lost your opportunity because this stuff is not easy. This stuff is, this stuff is very difficult. So I just want everyone to say thank you to Bao because without yeah. him, you know, we can't do this shit. Dude, the legacy of teaching trading would just never exist and it would just be run by a bunch of scam artists. Bao was, has been doing this for 15 years, guys, and indirectly without MIC for that whole time and now directly with MIC. Like, I don't think you guys actually understand what the trading world would look like without Modern Rock. You guys really actually don't know. And unfortunately, the guys who are literally brand new to Twitter and don't even know who MIC is, they'll never know. And that's the sad part. You know, me and Alex have been in this game for seven years, so we know the magnitude. But dude, anything that's ever been, you know, bred out there is because Bao started. I'm not fucking kidding you, dude. So that was what we we're very we're, lucky to have him. We're very lucky. It's it's kind of like a generational hero, seriously. Bow's that Bow's that guy to the trading world. Not even just us to the trading world. I'm telling you guys, man, it's not about the PL. I mean, at one point in my life, I stopped caring about PL. I didn't care about making more money. I just want to fucking quit and fucking <laughs> do nothing. And so Alex and fucking Tosh came and and fucking got me on my depression because, dude, seriously, after a while, man, I mean, I was printing money, guys. Yeah, I was making more. I mean, before people even knew, right? I mean, a million dollars a day is a shit, right? But a million dollars 15 years ago is a lot of fucking money. <laughs> right. So yeah, seriously. Uh, but when you're chasing money, guys, the high score never fucking ends. You know, I hated games where there was no ending because I would just fucking keep playing and try to level up and there's no ending. Right. I mean, where the fuck do you end? So I, I have a lot of tweets on this. Trading is like a fucking video game where there is no fucking ending. There's no high score tomorrow. I mean, the whole if you're just chasing chase the high score, you have failed. And that will bring you a level of fucking unhappiness that you've never fucking ever in depression, right? So guys, figure out why you're doing this. The moment you figure out why you're doing this is the moment that you become consistent because, you know, when you wake up and go, fuck, I only made $500 today. What the fuck is $500? And you're sitting on your fucking ass. You don't have to do manual labor as a hot son. And you just fed your family for an entire week. You know, and that's when you start realizing, oh, fuck, $500 is a lot of fucking money. I'm going to stop out. I'm not going to blow up my entire account because I'm, I'm trying to compete with a guy next door. Some guy posts a giant p &L. I think I'm smarter than him. And so that, that's how the whole blowing up happens because you're like, fuck, yeah, I'm going to be fucking rich overnight because this guy's a dummy and he's fucking rich. And yeah, you know, like, be, be aware of all of the scammers out there on social media posting fucking a lifestyle. I mean, like, fuck that, man. I keep trying to tell everybody, two hundred dollars a day is life changing supplemental income. So the first step is do not quit your day job. Your day job is going to help you be afford to learn how to trade. You know, your job is to learn how to trade first, and then start making two hundred dollars a day in supplementing your income. That means that you can eat anything you fucking want when you go out, guys. If you make an extra two hundred dollars a day on top of your job, after a certain time, most people don't need to ever quit their job. Fuck these guys that keep telling you to quit their nine to fives. Fucking keep your 95. Your 95 is the reason why you're able to pay the rent while you learn to trade. Dude, I love it, man. That's the wisest um, words, bro. Um, and so, so that's, that's, the for me. that's the difference between me and everybody else, guys. I, everybody else is just fucking telling you to go all in, be, uh, be an entrepreneur. Fuck that shit. 90 fucking 8% people, I, I guarantee you, fail. 
being an entrepreneur. Social media is a lie, bro. <laughs> All those guys who are saying they're entrepreneurs, I'll bet so many more nine to fivers make more money. I'm talking 60 to 80 K salaries, bro. They have no idea what true entrepreneurship is. Dude, this is like fucking over a decade ago. I quit a, a quarter million dollar fucking sales engineering job to, to t- learn to trade because I love trading guys. It was never about the money. So, so the way I started was I was like, dude, I love this shit. I started becoming consistent. I was doing well. And I was like, at some point, this is when you, you quit your job. At some point, it's called an opportunity cost where the cost of going to work, you know, is less than you're making money, right? So I saved up, I mean, incredibly, like I made, I told myself that I made half a million dollars in trading and that's in my trading account. I will quit my job. And that, that's how I started trading because I made that why, why I had a nine to five. You have to have a bankroll, guys, because what happens is like, you can't really trade properly just like poker if you have a small bankroll. You will get you will get bluffed out because the rent is coming, your fucking credit card bills are coming, your fucking kids' fucking health plan is coming. You know, being a full time trader, being an entrepreneur sucks, man. You don't have health care. You gotta pay two thousand dollars to insure yourself. You know, so and you don't have paid vacations. So fuck this. Fuck this, you know, I just try to tell you, be realistic, guys. The yep. moment you can be realistic is the moment we start making money because, you know what, man, fucking $500 a day is an incredible amount of money. And be grateful for it, man. There's people that would kill to make $500 a day. There's people that would kill to make $100 a day, guys. Be grateful, and then you'll get to the next level, but be grateful for where you're at. It's just organic evolution, man. Alex didn't start off making $700,000 in a day, dude. He started off making 100 200 bucks. He's just the best case scenario now. That's the point. Is he you know what the thing is, bro? And I still fuck up, bro. I fuck up all the time, man. And if I could fuck up all the time and do like this, bro, it's it's the results. Tell, are- Alex, tell him about your eight hundred eighty thousand, your about your eighty thousand dollar loss and how you bounced back from it. That's a good story. <laughs> bro, the only thing is I already forgot about it. So I mean, <laughs> so did I. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you what happened. So it was like maybe three weeks ago. And I was doing very, I was doing incredible guys. I was making so much money. And what ends up happening is when you get on a hot streak, you start to get an ego. You start to get overconfident. You start to oversize. And all of a sudden, instead of focusing on the side plays, instead of focusing on the sympathy plays, I went to go slay the dragon. I tried to attack MRIN. I got halted up. I say, you know what? I'm going to deviate from the process. I'm not going to use hard stops. I'm better than this, this, that. And then, you know what? The market humbled me. It told me you deviated from the process one time. One time you deviated and I'm going to make you pay for it. And anytime we lose in the market, guys, I lost $80,000 in one day. It sucks. You know, it's, it's a lot of money. It's, I think about it as like a car. I think about it as whatever. And you know what I told myself and I reminded myself is the process isn't flawed. The operator, me, I was flawed. I deviated. I broke the process. So my goal the week after was to stick to the process to the T, lines, fantasy orders, hard stops, broker limits, this, that. And then literally, no exaggeration, one week later, I had a $100,000 week and it was gone. Crazy, man. Yeah. How'd you get that? Tell how you bounced back. I bounced by, back by sticking to the process every day, showing up, trading, walking away at zombie time and you know what added up? 10,000 one day, 20,000 another day, 30,000 another day. And you know, guys, I'm not here all day trading. I have MIC work to do. So I trade for one hour a day and I walk away. And I'm telling you, if you look at all these charts today, every single one of them, if you walked away at 1030, you would have saved yourself a fucking boatload of headaches. Yep. Stick to your process, see what works for you. And you know, so Alex lost that because he deviated the moment he went back to his process he made the money no, back. i deserve to lose i deserve to lose because i deviated and i and sometimes guys you need that kick in the face to humble you back down it happens to me it happens to bow it happens to everyone and sometimes it's the best thing that could have ever happened because now we stick to our process even more like we stick to it even more and even longer you know Dude, and the only person who's ever going to say he deserves a loss is a guy that takes this as serious as a career, not a gambler. Gamblers are going to blame 
They're going to look for every excuse why the operator wasn't the problem. If you treat this like a career, like Alex just said, he did de deserve that loss that day. And he deserved to make it back because then he went back. And you know what, bro? I tell that all the time, bro. You motherfucker, you deserve to lose on that stuff. <laughs> I know he deviated. And Dude, you know, it's not, I, I remember. It's not to be mean. It's not to be a dick. But sometimes you need someone to slap your fucking face and tell you, yo, you're fucking up. Because as a friend, as a trading buddy, as, as someone that, you know, respects Bao and admires him, I want to see him do well. And sometimes if I have to be that guy that calls him a fucking asshole, I'm going to do it because at the end it's to help him, you know? Dude, and we're, and we're not kidding, man. I remember like, what was it, Alex? Like two weeks ago in, in our WhatsApp chat, you literally left an audio message. You're like, Val, you just lost 10K, you motherfucker. You deserve to lose that. Now get back on process. And I was like, oh, shit. And you know what happened? <laughs> After that, the guy made enough money to fucking buy fucking 100 Teslas. You know exactly, know bro. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, we all, we all forget, guys. So a good trick I always tell guys is, you know, Ben, man, go back to when you're a child and you had no money what it felt like to walk around Walmart, Costco, whatever it is, and how much $1,000 really is. And then the moment that you fucking only make $1,000 that day, slap yourself in the fucking face. Yeah. Now, let me, let me add to that and say that, and also on a flip note, when it comes to your education, how much 1000 or two isn't a lot of money for the potential reward of what you can make. So in trading in the real world, how much it is, yes, but when you're talking about investing $2,000, guys, to learn from us and learn to make money for the rest of your life with a one-year uh, you know, tuition, so to speak, dude, I mean, what, what's $2,000 for an annual membership in the long run when we teach you something where Alex is making this kind of money for the next 100 years? Dude, that's the whole point, bro. That's the whole point. So it depends also how you look at where the money is getting allocated as well. I love it, dude. This was a hell of a webinar, dude. I think we should... I think we're getting a, about wrap up time, but uh, Alex, man, thanks for coming on today, dude. Seriously, great insight for tomorrow, bro. Yeah, man, let's fucking kill it tomorrow, man. I'll be here early. I'll be here making the watch list. I'll be here fucking stalking these stocks. And, you know, I gave you guys my thought process. I gave you my plan. And, you know, CEMI is now fucking broken. 550, 6, 650 tomorrow, you know? Yep. Use your whole and half dollar numbers, guys. This is why we teach you this. Um, as a recap, really quick, guys, just a total recap. If you have any question about anything I talked about, I know someone, um, uh, Ruben, you were asking about how to, you know, is there any promotions on annual accelerate guys? If you have any questions about getting in either schedule a free consultation or send me a text and here's my number, send me a text at 213-458-5997. We'll get you in the club. We'll get you learning the correct way. And don't be scared to invest in your education, man. I'm telling you it's a one-off and then you learn something that you can do the rest of your life. So when you, when you one day think like, can I ever be an Alex? Can I ever? Yes, dude, but you got to learn correctly. And we're just going to help you on that as best we can, man. So if you got anything from this webinar, imagine what it would be like if you're actually a member member and you have access to the video library and hundreds and hundreds of videos on everything that's gonna help you learn exactly what Alex was talking about today or the lines that we were discussing or the indicators like pivot points on low hanging fruit that were, that were also talked about. So reach out to me, Val, Alex, you're my fucking brothers in crime. Dude, I love you guys to death, man. Uh, love all the members. Let's do this again next week, man. We'll see you next week. Thanks guys. See you guys. Catch you later, man. Yeah, back to after hours. <laughs>